This is the Let's Go Win Podcast with your host, J.M. Ryerson. Hey, hey, what's happening, guys? Welcome back to Let's Go Win Podcast. I am here for a Tuesday tune-up. J.M. Ryerson and my co-host. Good morning, Lisa Ryerson. How are you doing this morning? Doing awesome. Kind of funny watching. We we have a dog that's come over today, <laughs> and they are literally, um, they are literally. Excuse me, they are playing outside. So it's like a play date for dogs. Yep, I had to get their water bowls ready to go. Like I haven't done play dates with children for quite some time. I mean, my kids just go play with other kids now, right? They just kind of roll out. Um, but I remember playing these play dates, so it's become dog play dates now. Well, I saw you put out the treats, put out some <laughs> toys and balls. So it's literally like having your kids have a play date. So uh, anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. I uh, This is going to be an interesting one because it's a pretty heavy subject at times. And that is don't wait for a tragedy to live fully now. So this is one of those things that, um, you know, so often we're waiting for something great to happen. We're waiting for this amazing thing in the future. We're always waiting for the next thing. And what I, I hope we get across today is don't wait. And before I get into kind of some of the keys that I believe can help with that, when I say don't wait for a tragedy to happen, to live fully now, what does that mean to you? Do you, what is, what is, how does that hit you right when I say it? You're going to make me cry today, aren't I'm you? I'm trying not to, actually, <laughs> because it's real easy to right. this particular subject um, because there's certain subject matter that immediately I think of, and mm -hmm. I know you do too. Yeah. But that's not my point. That's because I do believe if you're thinking about your brother, he did lo live fully. He yeah. really did love life. So, But I'm not going there today. That wasn't yeah. my point. So without, without putting that in your head, when I say live fully now – don't wait for a tragedy. What, what do you think? Yeah, it's, you know, it does take me back to my brother, right? Obviously, my brother passed away, as most of you know, at the age of 49, really quickly from esophageal cancer. And there was a shift in my life after that because it really brought to my attention, like, oh, my gosh, life isn't guaranteed. Like, tomorrow's not guaranteed. We don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow, right? And so from that point forward, I make a really conscious effort to have fun every single day. Now, I'm not saying every day is rainbows and, you know, flowers blooming. <laughs> like, it's not perfect, right? It's not always going to be happy every single day. I have bad days too. But is making sure that we are trying to have fun at least every single day. And it has been gotten a lot easier I think too you know moving here to Florida I've met the most amazing positive happy women um, that I've surrounded myself with and that's what I've chosen right I've asked for that and the universe just dropped them all in and they do they have a great time all the time and we get together and we just have a blast right there's no drama there's no you know woe is me there's none of that and so I think it's really important to surround yourself with people that are in alignment with you and it's like yeah we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow so let's make sure we enjoy each and every day yeah i couldn't agree more and one of the things you said several times is the word choice and that is one of my favorite words as you know you choose to do this so mm -hmm. you don't have to move across the country you don't have to relocate to do that it is a conscious choice to surround yourself with people to choose to enjoy life to choose to uh really embrace every single moment it is a choice and that's really point number one because i mean look we won the lottery by being born in the, the u.s in my opinion mm -hmm. i'm just i think we're very fortunate right so that wasn't a choice that was something that happened for us which is amazing but then we can become prisoners of our own heads instead of choosing to live fully we could choose to be grateful and enjoy what we are given, what we have, or we could choose to look at the shit like, yeah, my, you know, it wasn't a perfect day or uh, they forgot my order or all these, you know, small, mm -hmm. as we call them, first world problems, but it is a choice. And so I like what you say is, listen, choose to live fully now. 
it is your choice. So I don't know that you said it several times. Anything else that you want to add on to? No, I think you hit it spot on. I mean, it is a choice. I never thought it was a choice for many years. It was kind of like, oh, like this is happening and this is happening. And I would bitch about a lot of things and, you know, just I wasn't feeling, um, for example, when we had our kiddos, like that was such a big shift for me. And staying at home with the kids, like I wasn't used to that, but I chose to do that. But then I also became a victim of that as well and was kind of like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. Like, you know, and just having postpartum and being with the baby and all that stuff. And then by the time number two came along, right, Trey came along, I realized, no, you have a choice. Like, yes, like how amazing it is to have a baby. Some people can't even have children, mm. right? Like some people don't even get to change poopy diapers or get spitted on, you know, and it's all perspective. Did you say get spitted? Spitted. That's a new one. <laughs> I know, make up words all the time. Get so spat. Is it spat? It's I get spat on. Yes. Oh, okay. Get I, spat I, I on. Believe, I don't think spitted is a thing. I spitted. I spat. Anyway. I spat. It doesn't Sorry. matter. <laughs> uh, it just kind of made. So I'm on uh, hour 88 of a 90 day or 90 hour cleanse. So 88. I hope I said that right. 88th hour of a 90 hour juice cleanse. And this is why, why I bring this up is you literally said that is a choice last night because <laughs> I was not feeling ideal. My mind's been sharp, but my body is starting to not be at top peak form. And what you said is, look, that's a choice, not my problem. <laughs> and the reason I bring this up, this somewhat has to do with the subject matter today, but it was a choice. I chose to do this cleanse. I chose to push myself to do this so stop bitching about it and just deal with it and just maybe journal about it, which is what i ended up doing i journal about it felt better at least mentally and so again don't wait for a tragedy don't wait for okay i'm not feeling great look it's a choice F deal with it and move on so we did talk about perspective i'm realizing how much i use my hands because nisha was telling me stop using your hands so much it's got to drive the camera use i apologize but it, I just do, I realize that. Anyway, um, perspective. And you talked about that, but having the perspective of, you know what, life is pretty good. Or, you know what, you said it earlier, some people can't even have children. Right. So instead of complaining about what was me or whatever, what kind of perspective do we need to keep? So that would be the second point that I would say to have. So when it comes to perspective, how do you keep perspective so you choose to live fully today? Yeah, so I catch myself, right? Because no one's perfect. And I would love to have a grateful perspective each and every single day. Uh, but sometimes I'll catch myself and I kind of go down this rabbit hole, you know, when things aren't going right or maybe <laughs> one of my triggers is when... I'm dealing with, uh, you know, someone on the phone, right? And I'm, whatever it may be, there's some type of discrepancy maybe in my credit card bill or whatever it is. And you're just trying to communicate, you know, with this other human being and I get irritated, right? But then I have to stop myself and I go, okay, let's just shift it and let's take it from this spot to this spot, right? Like 180 degrees. I'm just going to flip it just to see what happens. And I've been doing this exercise where, you know, if I sit there and go, oh, this is the worst thing ever. I'm on the phone on hold with Verizon Wireless for 45 minutes. And then I go, oh my gosh, I need to flip it. And instead of saying that, I go, okay, let's do the opposite. How amazing is it that I have a cell phone and that I have a phone to call Verizon Wireless and talk to somebody? Not everybody in this world have phones, right? You know, and so it's just putting it into that perspective really helps me. I just have to flip it. Yeah, it's a good way of thinking of it. Like, and you say it all the time, uh, they're doing the best they can with the tools they were given. And that one has stuck with me, especially when driving them. My thing I've talked about many times, and it happens every morning. I'm like, yeah. but, you know, just realize that, you know, they have their own stuff going on. They're not thinking about you. It's not right. all about you. So... And the last one, this might be arguably the most important, and that's having a sense of urgency. You know, so often I think people take, um, they, they take it for granted that we have this life, that we have, let's say it's 80 years or 
90 years or whatever you think until you're going to pass away. And if you haven't thought about it, I apologize, but it's going to happen, right? I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. I hope so, but I don't know. So I'm going to give everything I have today, having that sense of urgency to say, don't wait, let's go now. Let's, let's love on the people we have in our lives now. Don't wait to tell them that. Right. It's so often, and I talk about it, is there's a book called uh, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying by Brony Ware. It's a gal out of Australia. And the biggest, the number one reason is that I wish I had the courage to live a true life to myself, not the life that others expected of me. And when I think about that, how, how many times do you make a decision because your parents wanted you to? because your spouse wanted you to, because this is what everyone else is doing. You know what, I'd never, but fuck that. Like you live your life mm -hmm. with the urgency for what you need to do. And I'm very passionate about this one. And I know I drive you crazy personally because I do live my life so much this way, but I just don't know how long I have. So I wanna live today like it's my last. No, absolutely. And we've had this conversation, right? Even just recently, it was kind of like, you know, I was getting frustrated and there was um, things that were coming up for me recently. And I go, gosh, you know, I just realized I've been going through life. Like, yeah, I make a ton of choices, right? I make a ton of choices. You, you know, we make choices as a couple. We do all these things. But I also look back for the last 20 years. I'm like, oh, I've just kind of just gone along with things, right? Like, James gonna open off an office in Oregon, so we move. James gonna come back, you know, and to California, so we move. James wants to move out of California, so we move. And so I look back and I go, how many choices did I really have? You know, which I feel like they did have a lot, but a lot of times I just kind of went along with it, right? And it's not like I'm gonna buck the system or I'm not gonna go against you, but I just feel like now it's like, okay, I have a voice and I need to go, no, this is a family decision. Let's really sit down and talk about it because I don't want to be like upset about it and upset at you for going along with it when it was my choice to go along with it. Right. Well, and that is, that's actually, it's a different way to look at perspective, which is looking at it through the lens of the other person, which mm -hmm. when we're having that conversation, it was heated. Um, <laughs> it but. was absolutely me saying, reading my own press, as I call it, like, mm -hmm. I, 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 you're not doing X. And the truth is when you said, hey, look, I want you to look at these major decisions that were made and I supported this family. Mm -hmm. We did make a choice as a family or I sacrificed as a family, but I didn't look at it from that perspective in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. I was looking at what you weren't doing in that moment. So that's a different way to look at perspective. But um, yeah, no, I appreciate you not completely bucking the system. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's, I guess that's just compromising, making as all marriages need to, but specific to living fully, you have. You've allowed me mm -hmm. to live my life fully and not wait. And I know sometimes you had to be on the back burner and there are times that I'm going to choose to mm -hmm. do that as well. So anyway, I guess what I would wrap up with or start to is, Guys, don't wait. You know, I, I look back as, as uh, September 11th wasn't long ago. The last time this country was really united was after 9-11. And that is sad to me. It really is. And it's not to get on a high horse. I just, I want more open dialogue to happen because I don't want to wait for something really tragic to happen to our country for Democrats and Republicans to put their swords away and to actually listen and have dialogue. I had a really fun car ride with two guys the other day and we had absolutely opposing views on certain uh, matters. And I said, you know what? I don't agree with you, but I'm willing to listen. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you do the same. So I guess that's getting a little heavy. We don't typically talk politics or anything like that. But as a country, I hope that we don't have to wait for something really radical to happen for us to start saying, let's win as a country instead of, I'm right on this side of the aisle or I'm right on that side of the aisle. So anyway, it's just one of those frustrations that I've been feeling because I like to win, man. And I don't give a shit who is right. I really don't. I just want us to win. And right now I don't feel like that's the case. So anyway, with that, uh, how do you want to end this? Because I went on a rant there. At the end. <laughs> you 
Yeah, well, make sure you check out our website. It's newly improved. Um, lots of fun things going on in there. Podcast, articles, um, I mean, just a lot. Freebies, there's a lot of fun stuff. So make sure you check that out at www.letsgoin.com. Awesome, you guys. Until next time, continue transcending life. And remember, your mindset matters. We'll talk to you then. Thank you so much for listening. If this content is delivering value to you, please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. That helps us build this community, and that is what we are all about. Building this community as big as we can, helping as many people as we can, and deliver as much value as possible. Be sure to head over to letsgowinpodcast.com for information on my coaching courses, and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Let's Go Win 365. Let's go win and transcend in life. This is the Let's Go Win Podcast with your host, J.M. Ryerson.